Hi, this is a series of presentations on how 5G NR is different from LTE. So assumption is people know LTE. There are also quite a few videos out on the internet about 5G NR. So I thought the focus of my uh, discussions will be to highlight how different it is from LTE. Okay, so I'll have more. My name is Srikant and I'm with NanoCell Networks. So I'll start with the first signals that the UE observes, uh, which is the synchronization signals. Uh, as in LTE, in 5G NR, we have PSS and SSS, but somewhat different. And that's what I want to summarize here. Um, PSS, the length uh, of the sequence is different. The type of sequences are also different. Okay, so instead of a ZC sequence, now we have an M sequence. Uh, the number of synchronized secondary sync is increasing and that directly uh, along with the fact that this is gold sequence. Uh, this increases the number of unique cell IDs from 504 to 1008. So that gives us more room to play with, uh, with a lot of small cell deployment. In LTE, the approximate bandwidth uh, of the region where synchronization signals are sent is approximately around 1 megahertz, roughly a 46 RBs, uh, sent two times in a frame, so very fixed periodicity. All that goes for a toss here in 5G because of various deployment options. So of course, first of all, because of variable subcarrier spacing, our bandwidth is not fixed. Okay, uh, It can also be positioned in a variety of uh, ways, not in the center, 1 megahertz. Okay. And this is primarily to help with faster sync and so on because we have a sync raster concepts. And so that covers these two parts where we had fixed bandwidth, fixed position related to the center frequency. All that is quite different in 5G NR. Performance wise, the new sequences chosen in 5G have been shown by simulation to give better performance. Uh, LTE has no concept of a, what we call as a beam formed SS block, which is an idea in 5G primarily to uh, help beam form uh, as well as club PBCH along with the synchronization signals. And of course, sync signals coming in blocks can be beam formed. The number of beams can be different with millimeter wave having more possibilities. And of course, it's a very more flexible time periodicity of SSPs. So in summary, I would say uh, larger cell IDs, flexible bandwidths, flexible beam forming, flexible time periodicity. I think these are some highlights of the synchronization signals. Before I go to the next channel, which I want to just briefly allude to, just wanted to quickly differentiate between LTE and 5G NR with respect to physical channels. Uh, so many channels are the same as you can see, but what is absent in 5G NR are these two channels, PCFH and PH. Many of you might know PCFH indicates how many symbols we need to look for PDCCH in a subframe. PH is used for ACNAC. Okay, so that's what we need to keep in mind. Of course, in other videos, I'll come back to certain intricate differences in different channels. So next channel which the UE will expect to see is PBCH and as we have already seen in the 5G case, uh, it comes along with PSS SSS. Um, so it's part of this SSB and, uh, and very similar differences as in the case of sync signal. Uh, in LTE it was always fixed bandwidth, here the bandwidth is not fixed, here it's bundled along with the sync signals, here it's not the case, the coding is different the CC becomes polar coding. There is no concept of directionality. Since we start with directional SSP possibility, we have directionality and many beams can be sent in a equivalent time as a subframe here, of course, slightly different in 5G, but if you assume a subframe as a unit of time, uh, there is no connection with PRAC and PBCH in LTE. In 5G NR, there is a strong connection because PBCH contains certain details which are very important in the whole batch process okay and because in LTE it was always tied to the center frequency position here because it comes with SSPs there is no such time tying uh, 
uh, number of RBs are also different, 20 instead of 6 RBs, okay. And of course, frame timing which was obtained using different secondary sync signals uh, are not the case here. Frame timing is obtained by information given in the PVCH. So these are some differences which can help us uh, at least kind of understand how things are morphing from 4G to 5G. The last channel that I'll take up for today is PDCCH. PDCCH is very important as we know, primarily involved in scheduling for downlink and uplink. Uh, in the case of LTE, PDCCH information in a subframe was always conveyed by PCFH in terms of the time extent. Uh, the more interesting idea here, which is coming from the bandwidth parts notion, etc., is the idea of core sets, the control region sets, which are configured by RRC. Okay. Uh, PDCCH is typically spread over the entire bandwidth, which was the limitation for LTE, that all UEs need to support the biggest bandwidth. No such idea. The core sets can be restricted to a certain smaller bandwidth part. Okay. A similar idea of control channel uh, you know, elements with slight differences in sizes and aggregation possibilities. CRS, very important for PDCCH decoding. No CRS in 5GNR, DMRS for decoding. And of course, PDCCH in LTE was always having certain restrictions for downlink and uplink allocation. A lot of flexibility here. Okay. So that I hope has gotten us started on this journey. To look at the differences between 5G and 4G. For more information, please visit our website nanocellnetworks.com. Thank you.